Adobe aren't known for an aggressive feature release schedule in Lightroom. But over the years, it has transformed from a very simple app into a complex asset manager and raw editor. But if there's one area in which Adobe have innovated, it's with masking, where they remain well ahead of the competition with AI masking tools that make targeted edit ridiculously easy. But in late 2023, they released a feature which seemed to fly under the radar a bit and didn't get as much attention as I thought it would have. In my opinion, the intersect feature in the masking panel is one of the most underrated tools in the app. You can also find it in Affinity Photo and Dark Table, but the implementation in Lightroom is far and away the easiest that I've used. And in this video, I'm going to explain what the Intersect tool does and how you can use it to enhance precisely targeted regions of your photographs in truly creative ways. The most useful Lightroom feature you've never used was hiding in plain sight. The add and subtract options in Lightroom's masking panel are straightforward and their purpose is immediately clear. You can add or subtract from a mask with another mask. For instance, I can add a brush mask to a linear gradient to manually extend the linear gradient's limits just by brushing in additional areas. Or I can subtract from a subject mask with the color mask to exclude a specific color range. But the intersect tool doesn't seem to have gained the same traction as add or subtract, probably because the term intersect isn't immediately intuitive for many users. But what if I was to tell you that you could replace the word intersect with the word contains? So we could contain a color mask with a radial mask, creating a super mask that harnesses the power of both directions in one targeted adjustment. If you use the add function, then you are combining everything from two masks. But if you intersect, you're only combining the areas where the functions of those two masks overlap. The first mask is the container, i.e. a subject mask. And the second mask is the function, a color mask, for instance. Once you start sticking the word contains between mask types, you quickly realize that this is an incredibly useful tool that will enable you to create more natural looking edits with targeted and surgical precision. So here are a few cool uses of the intersect tool to get you started. Here's an excellent use for the intersect mask. We're going to intersect a subject mask, namely this lighthouse, with a linear gradient to supply a very natural looking glow on the side of the building as if this sunset was it illuminating it. So I'm going to click on the subject and we've got our lighthouse. Now I'm going to come over to that mask, click the three dots, and then I can select intersect with mask using linear gradient. Now I'm going to drag this out and the further I stretch this across, the bigger the feather's going to be. So therefore the more subtle the effect, but we want a fairly strong effect going on here, but obviously we want it to look natural. So we don't, don't want it to go past the midway point on this lighthouse because on the side it's in shadow, the want to look realistic. So I'm just going to tilt that slightly. And I'm going to come down to my color temperature slider and watch the left side of the lighthouse as I drag that up. And we've got this beautiful, very natural looking glow. All right, next example, we're going to intersect luminance range with color. So here we have a nice sky. I'm going to create a new mask, select luminance range. And we only want the brighter stuff. So I'm going to drag in on the left there. 
and that's nicely selected the sky got a nice sky selection but let's say from that sky i only wanted to select the kind of orangey tones so we come up to our triple dot click intersect with mask using color range and we click where we want the color range to be and you can see from the highlighted area we've just got those nice orangey tones selected so i could now come down to the saturation slider and just crank up those orangey tones so we've got this perfectly targeted mask here we select the luminance range high end just to select the sky i'm selecting these orangey tones just to increase the saturation of them Intersect's mighty useful for selecting very specific parts of an image. Let's say, for instance, in this photograph, I wanted to select these two hills and do, say, some texture adjustments to them. If I went and selected the luminance range and clicked on this area here, even if I finesse this, I'm going to capture the sky in my shot. There's no feathering or range adjustments I can do that's only going to select these two hills. However, if I do a sky selection, it's just selected the sky, it's done a good job of it, and then I invert that, invert sky selection like so. We've now got all of the hills selected. Now I can intersect that mask with luminance range. I can click right here. And I can stretch out that range, feather the selection just to get those hills. And then I can come down and make just the changes I want, say, to the texture or the clarity. Or say I wanted to make them slightly more saturated, I can just bring that up. Here's a cool spotlight style technique for accentuating your subject. Utterly, I'm going to create a new mask, selecting the subject, which of course is going to be this gull that was stood on the post here. And then I'm going to intersect that with a radial gradient, like so. I'm going to drag that out. So it's just kind of covering the, uh, the top half of the bird, roughly in the direction that the, uh, the light's shining up from left to right. And I'm just going to turn up the exposure and look at that beautiful, subtle increase in brightness on the bird. If you want to increase the contrast on a particular object inside the photo, then we can use the object mask in combination with a linear gradient. So in this photo, we've also got the sun rising over on the left here, which is lighting up the left side of the boat. And if I wanted to just subtly increase the contrast, I could darken just the left side of the boat. So I'm going to get the object brush. I'm just going to paint roughly over this boat here. It doesn't have to be too flash because the AI will work wonders on this. There's our excellent object selection. Now we're going to intersect that with a linear gradient, like so. I'm just going to drag across to the middle of the boat. I might even move that back slightly. We only want a subtle effect here. And now we can grab the exposure and just gently lower that. And all we're darkening is that left side of the boat. Just accentuate that nice contrast between the brightly lit sunny side of the boat and this darker side over here. And finally, here's a beautiful, subtle kind of spotlight effect. Let's say we've got the sun setting over here and I just wanted to kind of increase the golden glow on these rocks here. The best way of doing this would be to select a luminance range mask. I'm going to click just over here. Uh, and we're going to refine that slightly so we get more of these rocks. Let's just bring that edge in there. Drop that one down. 
So I want to select this very specific range here. That's nice. We don't have to worry about everything that's going on here because remember we're intersecting. So I'm going to grab my intersect and I'm going to go with a radial gradient. I'm just going to drag a circle around where I want this golden spotlight effect to appear. Let's select the gradient. It's going to move that. And if, if I move this around, you can see it is literally like a spotlight effect. It's so cool. So let's put that there. And now I'm just going to turn up the color temperature. Watch the rocks. And we've got this beautiful, very natural looking kind of sun kissed rock area. Absolutely stunning effect. Works really well on situations like this where you've got some dynamic range and some golden hour light. So there you go. Just a few ways in which you can combine the masks in Lightroom to create cool edits with incredible ease. There are myriad ways of using the intersect function to create these cool combinations that are simply not possible any other way. You could also try sky intersect with color range, people intersect with luminous, inverted subject intersect with linear gradient, Brush intersect with object. Luminance range intersect with radial gradient. Once you start experimenting, you'll discover a heap of combinations. And now that will do us for this look at the intersect tool in a Lightroom. Have you used it yet? Or have you only tried the add and subtract options? If you have used intersect, what combinations did you come up with? Let me know in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this video, then do remember to give it a like. And if you got value from my content, then do consider subscribing to my channel. I also draw your attention to my sub stack, where you can find the written version of this roundup. Until the next time, guys. Ta-ta.